The arteries in the head may seem to be a little complicated based off of looking at this picture, but it's really not too bad once you kind of get the hang of it and uh, understanding the correlation between these arteries and the veins uh, associated with them. So uh, just taking a look at this picture here is the anterior and the posterior side. We have the, uh, the teeth here and, and the little uh, place for the eyes and the nose. Um, now, remember with the right side, you just have the, the brachiocephalic artery is coming up and providing the blood for, for these arteries here. The left side is a little bit different. Um, just remember that little trick where the, uh, the stuff on the left side is coming out of the subclavian artery, the left subclavian artery. And here it's just the origin of the blood is coming from the brachiocephalic, which is then going to branch off from there to the right common carotid artery and the right subclavian. So from the right subclavian, there's the, uh, the right uh, then, uh, vertebral artery. The right vertebral cart artery is coming up. That's going to make its way back to the posterior brain, and, uh, and both the verte vertebral arteries are going to form that basal artery that we'll talk about just a little bit. Okay, so let's, let's begin this, uh, this journey here with, with the right common carotid. And remember, that guy's going to come up and branch into the, uh, the, the right superior thyroid artery. And then it's going to branch off into its external and internal portions. So here in this picture, the, the, the branch that's going more anterior is the external and the branch more posterior is the internal here. So internal, or, uh, yeah, internal and ex external here. So the internal is going to make its way up to the, uh, the part of the middle part of the cerebrum. And we'll talk about that once we talk about the uh, circle of Willis along with the vertebral artery. Okay, so the external artery is going to come up and branch into the lingual artery, just like the, the lingual vein did uh, previously. So, so higher from the, 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 that, that lingual artery is going to uh, provide the oxygenated blood towards the bottom of the mouth. Um, so a good portion of the mouth, but not all of it. Uh, we'll talk about some more of the um, stuff towards the upper mouth in a bit. The lingual artery um, is just going to run uh, inside the mandible. Uh, as you can't really tell from here, it looks like it's running outside, but it's actually on the inside. Uh, more medial. Okay, so above the lingual artery, we have our facial artery, just like the facial vein as well. The facial artery is just going to provide blood to this whole front region of the face, the anterior region of the face. Uh, it covers a lot of surface area, just like the facial vein did. Facial artery. Facial artery. Okay, so moving along upwards, we get to our occipital artery. Occipital artery, think the occipital bone or the occipital uh, lobe of the brain. Blood going to there. This is the occipital artery. And then up from there, we have the maxillary artery, which is going to provide the oxygenated blood to the upper roof, the roof of the mouth, the, uh, the, the palate. And it's also going to provide blood towards uh, the, the, the middle ear area as well. Okay, so going up higher from there, then we have our posterior auricular artery, which is going to provide uh, oxygenated blood to the ear. This guy right here, the posterior auricular, auricular artery. And then up, just like with the veins, here's the superficial temporal artery. So that's, uh, that's it for the arteries that we're going to cover here. We'll go over them again, just to sort of pack it all, pack it all into one. Um, here, brachiocephalic artery, going to branch into the uh, right subclavian artery and the right common carotid artery. Here is the, uh, the vertebral artery, the right vertebral artery. From the common carotid, it's going to branch into the su superior thyroid artery, and it's going to branch into the internal and external portions. The external is going to also, or is going to make its... Uh, is going to first branch off into the lingual artery, just like this guy here. And coming up, it's going to branch into the facial artery, and then make its way to the occipital artery here. And then higher than that, we have the maxillary artery, 
this guy right here, and then the posterior auricular artery, kind of hard to say, and then finally top it all off with the superficial temporal artery, this guy right here, right along your temps. So that does it for the arteries of the head. Now we are going to start talking about the circle of Willis, the blood to the brain. Okay, so here we have the circle of Willis. And we're not looking at a uh, superior or inferior view this time. We're looking at the posterior and anterior view. Okay, so uh, let's begin with down here at the bottom in the, in the posterior. Uh, these two little leg-like structures are the vertebral arteries. We talked about that a little while ago uh, in part one. Uh, the vertebral arteries are going to be coming up from the subclavian arteries and uh, make their way up, and they're going to join together and make the basilar artery, which is this thick guy right here, and out coming from that are uh, some cerebellar arteries that we're not really going to talk too much about. And uh, so from, from the basilar artery, uh, go more anterior, we have these two structures here, which are called the posterior cerebral arteries. The posterior cerebral arteries. Okay. So, going more anterior from those guys, we have the uh, anterior communicating arteries. Anterior communicating. These two structures right here. Then in the middle here, we have these two different structures. The ones on the outside, these here, these are the middle cerebral arteries. The middle cerebral arteries are going to come around and provide oxygenated blood to the middle cerebrum. Okay? Uh, just as the name implies. Uh, these these two here in the middle are the internal carotid arteries. Remember, we talked about that uh, in part one and just a little bit earlier uh, in this video. The internal carotid arteries are going to come in and they're going to join and be part of this uh, circle of Willis right here. So, middle cerebral arteries, internal carotid arteries. All right, so now coming out from those, going towards the, the front of the head, or the front of the brain, rather, here we have the anterior cerebral arteries. The anterior cerebral arteries are both going to come up and go towards the front of the cerebrum. And then this structure here, uh, connecting the two, is called the anterior uh, communicating artery. The anterior communicating artery, right there. Okay, so it, it's not too much more complex than that. We'll go over it one more time just to just to keep it keep it fresh in our heads. We have the vertebral arteries are going to come up and form the basal artery and then these these structures here are the posterior cerebral arteries and then joining those to the mid uh, the middle of the circle are the posterior communicating arteries and then these structures on the outside are the middle cerebral arteries on the inside the internal carotid arteries and then those uh, these two going towards the front of the brain are the anterior cerebral arteries and then this one here connecting the two is the uh, uh, anterior communicating artery. That is it for the circle of Willis. Not much more than that. So uh, that is all the arteries uh, and veins, if you've been following along with that too, that I will be covering for a while. Um, until next time, thank you.